Hey YouTube, uh, this is David with Richter Scale Studios. Uh, taking a break from the train project right now. Uh, zombies are cool painting gave me uh, some inspiration um, to build a paint rack. I have the uh, Minotaur coming in. I have the full line of game color. I have the full line of army painter. I have a lot of uh, game color. Or not, I have all the game color. I have a lot of model color. And then I have Freak Flex. I have the, uh, the Freak Flex tints. So I am going to make two paint racks. I'm taking some of his idea, but trying to make it a little bit cheaper, a little bit easier. Um, first off, I bought some quarter inch pre-cut plywood for the, uh, the base. Uh, it's supposed to be two foot by two foot, but it's uh, 23 and 7 eighths by 23 and 7 eighths. Then this is, I bought eight foot, two eight foot lengths of three quarter inch, I guess it's one by three, but it's uh, three quarter inch by two and something uh, pre pre primed pine that's hard to say and for the shelves i was just really thinking about it and trying to do something really uh, down and dirty and cheap doesn't take a lot of skill so i thought about how about um this is called um <laughs> lost it for a second drywall uh, bead so this goes on the corners when they do um sheet rock in your house this is what they reinforce the corners with, and they tape it, then this is what you paint over to keep your uh, corners nice and straight. So this is a corner piece. This will be for, let me grab one of these bottles. All the bottles that I stand straight up, and that'll be basically um, all the Minotaur and these Freak Flex, and there'll be a couple other ones, like some uh, pots of P3 and stuff like that. That's perfect. It fits nice on there, and that'll bend a little bit back more, so you have plenty of room. Then uh, the model colors and the game colors and the reapers, I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to cut them out to size for the uh, shelf. Then I'm going to pound them and increase this shelf length. You see it's got this big round in it. So I'll bend it right there, pound it out, then we'll have this. And you can almost just leave it like that too. We can check that out, maybe save us a step and to see how that bends up. And you have a nice little storage rack that way. The smallest screws I could find were half inch screws and a quarter inch, that's not going to work because you go all the way through it. So what I'm going to do over there, as you're walking over here, I got some uh, little quarter inch moldings. So I'm going to put these like maybe, um, so you can see how small that is. Cut these in small little areas, then uh, pre-drill them, and then maybe do two, three, or four, I'm not sure how strong I need to make it and put the uh, screws through there into the backboard of the uh, shelving. So, um, so far what I've done, I'll cut that shelving. I just take a miter box. I don't know if anyone's, these are pretty uh, inexpensive. I recommend picking these up. I've been using this a lot for a lot of different projects. And it comes with a saw. And you just have your, you can have your angles. You've got straight, 30 degree and 45. Or that's what, 22.5 and 45, so half of 45. So I just throw it in there, 45, 45, 45, measure it out, 23, 7 eighths at the very tip of it right here. So that's when you cut it. So you put your, uh, your line right there and cut through. And that's where I got those four pieces at. So I'm just going to work on this first box right now. I'll be back with more parts of this. Um, and I'll do a pro uh, price list. All this has been purchased at Home Depot and I'm making it at Lowe's. I don't know about you guys in the UK. I, I don't know if you have Home Depot there or not. I figured they might be a national company by now. But um, that's it for right now. Thanks for uh, joining me, and we'll be back. Thanks. I am back. I am just drilling the frame together. This is down and dirty with some, uh, some black wood screws I had laying around. Cut this with the miter box, obviously, in a 45-degree angle. And putting some of our terrain stuff together, I made a 45-degree angle out of... Um, Legos I usually use for putting together um, plaster pieces from Hearst Arts. Well, I'm using that to set up my 45 degree angle, then I'm going to pre-drill it, then hit it with the uh, screws. So, um, maybe I'll do that on camera real quick. I'll be right back. I might lose you, I'm on low battery, but let's just drill this real quick. Kind of get a good eyeball on it. And... Another little hole there. Let's get back so we can get in there more comfortably. And right about there. Pull 
that out real quick. Even on camera, while I drill those out real quick. Pull the bit out. Oops. <laughs> Excuse me, people. Put that again. Tighten that up. Get the screws ready to go. off real quick. Flip it over. And we're ready to put the uh, last piece on. We're going to have a frame. Then we'll just mount this onto the uh, backboard and we are done. So uh, that's it for right now. I'll be back in a while. Thanks. Hey, I'm back real quick. Yeah, I got the frame together and I'm starting to install the bull, bull nose. And uh, I got past the problem with the uh, screws being a half inch and having quarter inch um, board on the fact to keep it light. Well, I got some one inch by uh, quarter inch molding, put it on the back of the bull nose, just kind of um, just fixed it with some masking tape, uh, rested it on these bottles here, and then these will come out a little bit more, but that's okay. Um, this is going to be out a little bit further. They're very secure in there, especially when you have it all stacked. And I think we're going to have almost what, 44, maybe 44 bottles per row. So that's a lot of. Sorry about that. The uh, camera died, or the battery died in the camera. So now you see um, it's starting to work out. I had to use this molding, like I said before. And this ran, uh, just pre drilled it, and then ran three screws, and it is in there solidly. And there we got, so we got 100 and. 152 paints there, what, 44 times 3, 88, no, 100 and, um, 20, 132. So that's right there, you can have 132 paints as it is setting right now. So uh, that is pretty nice. So um, I have to go make a run to Home Depot and buy some more of the molding and more of the bull nose. I went through that real quick, plus obviously we're going real quick with that. Got plenty of the L-shaped uh, drywall bead for the taller bottles that are coming in. And uh, that is it for right now. Thank you for joining me. And please comment, subscribe, and suggestions are great too. Thanks. Okay. Let's back this up a little bit. Um, there we have 23 paints on a row. So we got one, two, three, four rows. So that's... Um, 80, 92 paints they can hold so far and we have a long way to go. Um, it's going to be a lot smaller for these, uh, these uh, one ounce, I'm not sure if that's the Minotaur is going to be that same dimension as the Freak Flex, but I have a feeling it's going to be around there. And those are about three inches tall, so um, it'll be enough to fit the whole line of uh, paint in there, but I think this is, I'm going to put another two shelves of this in, and then um, maybe a couple more. Because I can fit, these are mostly all my, uh, some of my usual uh, model colors. And these are all my backup paints that I keep in a uh, container for my uh, spares. So uh, that'll be it for right now. I will uh, do some more of this and get this done. Thanks for joining me. There. Hi, this is David again. I'm just going to show you how I cut a quick shelf. Uh, this is the galvanized steel. It's very kind of thin, but it's plenty of strength to hold up the... Uh, um, paint. So I'm just going to make a quick mark right there. I got this all set up on a small uh, workmate and a couple uh, saw horses to keep it stable. And these are, I can see that on this, the lighting is kind of bad on this side of the garage. Some Fat Max uh, Stanley cutters. Um, they go through this like, like paper. I'll watch it real quick. And then I just come on the other side real quick. Oh, 
when we're done. I recommend um, taking some filing this down a little bit. It gets sharp. I'm fortunate that I have a grinding wheel in my uh, workshop. And um, you'll see, um, I have a little demonstration of that somewhere in this video. But um, that's it for now. Thanks for joining me. install the shelf real quick basically you know I take the uh, galvanized uh, bull nose um, drywall um, bead and then a piece of one inch by quarter inch molding that's gonna be the back part of this since we have such long screws going in, into this it's not very long screws but the shortest screws I can find to do with this and what we're gonna do is a guide to help us uh, put this together is just going to take the, um, the wood and the uh, um, bowl nose together real quick. There's a couple pieces of off camera real quick, sorry about that. I'm just taking um, some masking tape, just some cheap regular masking tape and putting it together. We're going to lay it in here, take some of our paints that we're going to be using as uh, as a model for what we're going to store here. And these are just uh, your standard Vallejos. So you put Vallejo in here, you can fit Reaper, you can fit Army Painter, uh, any of those paints with this. And I'm doing this as little amount of tools as possible. See, I'm not even measuring anything, just using it by kind of eyeballing it, making sure these fit nice, kind of snugly, but not too snug. So you want to have room to be able to pull them in and out. And I'm not going to fasten anything down. I got my drill ready to go. I have a small bit in here. Um, I'm using the guide holes of the um, galvanized bull nose. I'm only going to do three holes, one on each side and one kind of in the middle. It doesn't have to be exact, but you want to be close so it's you know sturdy enough. Then switch this out real quick to my. Uh, screwdriver bit and then I got my screws attached to this handy little uh, magnet thing on here I'm not going to put these all the way in at first I'm just going to get that driven in make sure that feels pretty good and go on the far side over here again and make sure we got it nice We're going to grab in it, but not too much. Hold that down. Start it in. Then we're going to put the middle one in all the way. Then go back to those uh, two. Finish those off. And that is it. And I can just rip the tape off. See if I can pull this for you guys. So this looks so far. And there we go. We have a good paint rack. So we got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and, and you can have ten. So there's uh, 230 paints right there if you want it. Um, that's probably more than enough. I have, I don't know, I'm probably over that. I have my carousel for my game color. This is going to be all for my model color, my uh, Reapers. I have Army Painter set I bought for uh, fun and excitement, so I could probably store that in there. And then I want to start making taller shelves for the Freak Flex and the Minotaur. I'm making a whole, actually for the Minotaur is going to have its own separate um, storage rack. But this is, these next shelves are going to be taller. So you can put in um, P3, you can put in your GW if you want. Also my Vallejo gold colors. So they're going to be more of a catch-all rack. They'll probably be about three and a half inches tall. These, I'm not sure what the height is on these by hand. But because there's been eyeballing them, it's... Uh, hasn't really mattered, so what do we got? An inch and a quarter. Yeah, about an inch and a quarter each one. And that's his eyeball on it, and we're actually pretty close on each one. Actually, one's a little thicker, but that's okay. Um, 
So that's just right now. Um, thank you for joining me. And uh, please subscribe. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Hey, I'm back, everyone. We have the... Uh, let me tilt this up real quick. Oh, I'm gonna fall out of here. Whoa. We have the um, basic construction done. Looking pretty good. I had a little crookedness on the top shelf. Got that fixed. Still be a little bit more, but hey, it's still going to work. Um, also, I decided to trick it out a little bit. I bought these wooden plugs. These uh, 516 flathead plugs. Just drilled a couple holes here and there. And these bad boys just kind of will fit in there and get some wood glue to fix them in. And then um, we're going to have rivets on this thing. So I told you I'm going to do this like in a rusted metallic uh, motif. So some interest to the studio upstairs. I just make it something kind of, you know, personal. And um, <clears throat> when I get all that done, I'm going to hit it with some uh, rust primer, then sponge it, some cheap paint, coat it up with some satin varnish. Then we're going to try the hairspray technique on this thing. Um, so we'll sponge it with all rust colors, oranges, yellows, and browns, and reds. And then uh, try the hairspray technique. I bought a bunch of hairspray from the dollar store. And then we are going to... Um, Airbrush with some cheap craft metallic paint. So I don't want to put an expensive paint into this. And then uh, we'll see how it turns out. Well, I, I really appreciate you joining me. Um, and we'll be back soon. Thanks. Oh, I'm back one more time. Um, this backing wood I'm using for the, uh, the bull nose to attach it to the plywood because of the screw length. Um, I'm running out of it. And it's 71 cents a foot, which is not totally pricey. But I found... At my local hardware store, it's a little bit different dimension. It might not work. I might have to double it up possibly, so it's going to wind up costing more. But uh, these are uh, yardsticks for a buck twenty-nine. So uh, maybe we might work these out. We're not sure, but uh, we'll uh, get back and give you an update on this. Thanks. I am uh, back regarding the uh, using the yardstick thing. Um, I don't want to run all the way down to my. Uh, Home Depot, which is probably about 15 miles from here, and with my truck at 10 miles a gallon, um, well, a little bit more on a good day, I get 12. Um, I'm going to use these, double them up, be fine. We'll get uh, we'll get a couple uses out of it, and also I use these also for uh, miniature painting stands, so the scrap will go will be useful too. So that's it for right now. Thanks. Hey, I am back once again. Um, I mentioned I use the 5 16th uh, flathead plugs, and I installed them. Uh, this is a totally unnecessary step, but this is going to make it look kind of trick. Uh, as I said, I'm doing metallic colors and rust, and some rivets just add a little nice touch to it. So um, I think that I'm going to cut this as part one, because then we'll go into the priming and paint next. So I um, hope you enjoy, and i got to thank... Um, Savage Models for the original paint rack. I'll have that in another video. A little harder to do. I did the routing thing and the fitting the shelves. And uh, Zombies Are Cool Painting, uh, the inspiration for this, basically. I just uh, went a little different direction on some of the shelving. And I made it made a little more simple. I didn't use any bolt nuts and bolts. It's all wood screws, a little bit of molding, the bullnose uh, stuff that I just ran across at the uh, store. They didn't have any plastic corners. They had some of the bullnose and plastic. It was very flimsy, though. Uh, I kind of think it uh, hold the way to paint. So whatever he had was awesome. I didn't didn't have it available to me, so I did what was best uh, available and could improvise with it. And I think it turned out pretty good. It's going to hold a lot of paint. Like I said, what 206 uh, of the Vallejo type bottles, and then we have the uh, Freak Flex, and then we have Vallejo Gold. We got the other Freak Flex. We got um, excuse my camera action. Uh, the P3s, plenty of those fit in there. Um, and that's it for right now. Thank you for joining me and uh, we'll be back with uh, part two of this. And we're still working on the train but getting sidetracked uh, thanks to Zombies Are Cool Paintings video. And we'll see you soon. Thanks.